The zones of Frostborn have five types of tombs. Each of those tombs have four variations, and each of those 20 variations have their own secrets. So in this video, I am going to go over each one. Frostborn has five types of tombs in yellow and red zones. There are no tombs in green zones. I have named each of these five tombs after an animal that resembles them so that we can better identify them and communicate about them with each other as Frostborn players. The lizard is the simplest of the tombs and has the lowest average hit point per chest ratio, which I will be talking more about. The worm has the lowest average of chest, but is arguably the safest tomb to do solo. The dragon is the second safest tomb to do solo, but it also has the second highest hit point to chest ratio. The scorpion has the worst average hit point to chest ratio overall, but often has free loot rooms. And then lastly, the bull on average has the most loot. But these are just generalizations because each tomb is different depending on what zone you find it in. So let's go over each one, which things are unique about that tomb, and then explain the most efficient way to do that tomb. When you enter a lizard tomb, you will notice a stairwell and a pathway leading northwest with three doors. The fastest way to get to the boss in this one is easy because it's just a straight line. If your team is expecting an ambush because perhaps you already killed the team in this tomb or in the zone above it, the best place to set up traps is in this doorway because it is far enough away from the entrance that their shields will run out, but also far enough away from the boss to have room for team positioning. You will notice in Yellow Forest Lizard that while only 25% of the chests are held in rooms L2 and L3, they contain almost 40% of the enemy hit points, making it usually best to ignore those rooms altogether. This is not as true for Yellowstone Lizard, but I still probably wouldn't recommend looting these rooms unless you were specifically farming for tomb preferential loot. If you have not seen my video on the most efficient way to get tomb preferential loot, then I strongly recommend checking that out because it covers a few tips that I don't cover in this video. Then we get to Red Forest Lizard, which you will notice has less enemy hit points and 50% more chests. This tomb is the most lucrative tomb in the game, tying at the maximum number of chests, but dominating at the lowest hit point per chest ratio of any other tomb. So if you get Red Forest Lizard, I strongly recommend opening every room and looting every box. Red Stone Lizard doesn't have quite as many chests and has significantly more enemies, but it is still the third most lucrative tomb in the game, so I strongly recommend farming all of it. When you enter a worm tomb, the pathway is again leading northwest, but you will notice that you came in through a tunnel rather than a stairwell, and there is only one door. The fastest way to get to the boss in this one is to go through that door, take a left around the loop, and then continue down the only path available to you. If expecting an ambush, the best place to set up traps is here because it gives your team enough time to capitalize on the extra damage. As I mentioned earlier, the worm has the lowest average of chests, but ultimately, a tomb is a tomb and all of them are worth doing if you need tomb resources. The worm is the safest tomb to do solo because it is not only fairly short and you can see when enemies are coming, but in most of the iterations, you can avoid attacking this giant which can serve to guard you if an enemy enters and tries approaching you. The sarcophagus in the middle of the boss room is skill disruptive, making it easy to kite the boss without needing to branch out to other rooms. This method is difficult to explain, so if you want to know more about how to do this, make sure to check out some videos covering tombs on our gameplay channel. Yellow Forest Worm only has 12 chests, but in addition to having very few enemies to start with, all of the chests can be looted without having to kill this wood giant, giving it one of the lowest hit point per chest ratios of any of the tombs. In this iteration, I recommend coming back and looting W3 after killing and looting the boss. I also recommend looting W3 in the Yellowstone iteration because killing five small enemies for two chests is what I would call lightly guarded loot. Unfortunately, in this iteration, you cannot avoid killing this giant, but it is interesting to note that this version has more chests than either of the red versions of this tomb. Red Forest Worm has a little bit less chests, but it also has a lot more enemies. You'll notice that they move this giant over a little bit only in this iteration to make it impossible to loot this chest without killing him. 
So unless you're farming for TPL, I recommend ignoring this chest, and I also recommend skipping W3 in this version of the tomb. Red Stone Worm is the worst iteration of this tomb, and one of the many reasons I recommend avoiding tomb diving in desperate foothills. But if you find yourself farming this tomb, it is important to note that you can loot all of the chests without killing this giant, and I do recommend looting W3. When you enter a dragon tomb, you will notice that you came in through a tunnel with a pathway leading southeast. The fastest way to get to the boss in this one is to always choose right if you have an option. This tomb is so long that it is difficult for me to tell you the best place to put traps if you're expecting an ambush, but usually the best place to put them is somewhere around D3 or D4. The Yellow Forest Dragon has the record for the lowest amount of chests of any tomb in the game, but there are a few tricks of making it more efficient. The first trick is that after you clear up into this point, you can move your character to this location to aggro these enemies one at a time. If you do this, you can avoid this giant hermit who will then serve to guard you as you finish the tomb. But after killing the boss, you will probably want to come back and kill him because he is guarding two of the 11 chests. More importantly, you will notice that D6 is guarded by a giant and three enemies but contains no loot, so there's no reason to open this room, whereas D7 has loot, but no enemies guarding it, so this room should always be looted. Yellow Stone Dragon is the complete opposite, with D6 having the easy loot, and D7 heavily guarded without any loot. Unfortunately, this giant will get aggroed regardless, which is one of the many reasons I avoid tomb diving in Garm's Fang. But if you find yourself in this tomb, I would also recommend looting D2 because the hit point per chest ratio for that room is pretty good. Red Forest Dragon has the fifth most chest of any tomb in the game, but it also has a lot of enemies and no unguarded loot. That being said, I do recommend looting D2 in this iteration because it has an incredibly low hit point per chest ratio. And it is important to aggro these three giants separately. The best way to do that is to walk over here to engage with this one, then to sneak over here until this giant pursues you and then lead it away to fight it alone, which then allows you to get a sneak attack on the last one. And then lastly, D6 has a little bit better ratios than D7, but unless you are farming for TPL, I would just avoid both of them. Other than having the record for the highest amount of small mobs in any tomb variation in the game, Redstone Dragon doesn't offer anything I haven't covered in the other variations. The only thing of note is that D6 does not have any loot and should therefore be avoided, whereas D7 has only one small enemy me in which you can sneak attack, essentially making it a free loot room. When you enter a scorpion tomb, you will notice a stairway with the pathway leading southwest. The fastest way to get to the boss in this one is to go straight, and then right, and then straight again. Once you reach S5, this tomb is the most difficult tomb to prepare for an ambush. Furthermore, when you get this far, it is unlikely that you will see enemies on your minimap, because by the time they get in range, they will either be sneaking or they will be prepared to rush you. So it is imperative that when you are farming this tomb, that your team is attentive to lag spikes, which often happen when another player is spawning into the tomb with you. If those lag spikes are reliable enough for you, then you can set up traps here, but more often a good team will use the giants of D5 or the boss to gain an advantage in an ambush. In Yellow Forest Scorpion, the first giant can be avoided to stand guard for you. S2 and S7 have moderately guarded loot, S4 has lightly guarded loot, and S8 is a free loot room. S6, 9, and 10 do not have any loot, and should therefore always be avoided. In Yellowstone Scorpion, S4 has heavily guarded loot, S7 has moderately guarded loot, S2 and 8 have lightly guarded loot, and S6 is a free loot room. S9 and 10 have no loot and should always be avoided, as should the giant in front of those rooms. Red Forest Scorpion is not only the worst Red Forest tomb, but also holds the record for the highest hit point per chest ratio in the game, totaling at almost four times as much as Red Forest Lizard. Red Forest Scorpion has no no free loot rooms with moderately guarded loot in S2, 4, 6, and 7, and lightly guarded loot in S8. And then S9 and 10 are again lootless. Luckily, the devs did move this giant back a little bit, so all three of these giants can be avoided. Red Stone Scorpion is not nearly as bad as the Red Forest iteration, but it still has the second highest hit point per chest ratio in the game. The loot in S2 is extremely well guarded and should be avoided, S8 is lightly guarded loot, and S4 is is lightly guarded if you are careful to open it without aggroing the giant. After that, there is no loot in any of the other rooms, so they
they should always be avoided. You will notice that S9 and 10 do not have any loot in any of the iterations, so unless you are looking for ghost flowers, there is no reason to ever open them. The bull tomb is easily recognizable because it is the only tomb that has a door that separates you from the first set of enemies. The fastest way to get to the boss in this one is simply to go right and then follow it to the end. If you suspect an ambush, the best place to set up traps is in this doorway. The bull tomb is most notable by the fact that on average it has the most loot chest out of any of the other types of tombs, but it is also the most straightforward of the tombs, so there aren't a whole lot of tricks for me to share with you about. For example, you can see here in the yellow forest bull that the loot and enemies are pretty much evenly distributed, making it to where if you are primarily going for the boss, then you should go straight to the boss. And if you are going for TPL, then you should simply kill every enemy and loot every chest. The same thing is true of Yellowstone Bull. It has less chests and less enemies, but they are all pretty evenly distributed. Red Forest Bull offers a little bit more variation in that B3 would be classified as lightly guarded loot and B4 would be classified as heavily guarded loot, but you will notice that B4 has a special chest containing better loot than your average chest. Due to RNG, it is difficult for me to tell you whether or not this chest is going to be worth your time, but if you have a teammate that has unlocked the Illusionist, I'd recommend getting them to take the giants away and then resetting them after you loot the chest. A similar argument could be made for looting B4 in Red Stone Bull, and I definitely recommend it if you are farming TPL, but otherwise I would avoid it. So those are the 20 different variations of normal tombs in Frostborn. Lizard is the most lucrative tomb, with Bull being a close second. Worm is the safest tomb to do so and then Scorpion and Dragon are the most complicated with several rooms that should never be opened and others that should always be opened. If you are a YouTuber and find a better way to do any of these 20 variations, just name your video something like the best way to do Red Forest Dragon and then send me a link on Discord and if it's better than my approach, I will put a link in the description. Two more quick tips, if you are farming tombs for TPL, then I recommend farming the Red Forest and if you are poor and looking for the lowest hit point per chest ratio, then you should farm the Yellow Forest, especially if the one triggered at Newheim is available to you. Lastly, you will notice that I did not include the Tomb of Ash, which is my favorite tomb in the game. This is because it is so complicated and amazing that I will be making a video dedicated to just that tomb. Well, that's it guys. Hope that helps. I love Frostborn, and if you do too, I hope you subscribe to this channel and to the gameplay channel because we are going to do whatever we can to make sure this game gets all of the love that it deserves. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.